Good day, mates. This is your favorite DJ, DJ OK. I know why you're listening to me right now. Want to know why? Because my news is free. Let's get into it. Okay. This Jesse Wu versus DJ Mars uh, saga continues. Now we got some updates. We got some updates. So yesterday, obviously, you guys saw what I had posted in my video. If you haven't, just go take a look at my previous video. But Jesse Wu said she had uh, took in the booking from her friend of the family in Canada and she came to perform in New York City and upon arriving in New York City she had to wait three to four hours at the hotel to get checked in and she just felt like the you know it was a little shady it was a little sus so she booked herself a flight on the, the first flight out and went back to I guess Atlanta that's where she's that's where she resides okay so that's Jesse Wu's side of the story now Okay, and DJ Mars' team has reached out to me and said, DJ, okay, Mr. Free News Guy, that is not how things went down. So, how did things go down? So, apparently, Jesse Wu did fly in to New York City. That was not a lie. She flew in. She landed around 1-ish. Um, when she landed around 1-ish, I guess they notified her transportation should be there shortly. Next thing you know, Jessie Wu is in an Uber on her way to her hotel. She jumps in the Uber and just heads out. So at around two something, they reach out to her. Around two something, they, they reach out to her and basically ask like, yo, where are you? And basically, why are you in an Uber on your way to the hotel? Fast forward past all that. Now around, let's say, in the two-ish, two o'clock-ish two area, um, they left, they notified her that somebody is on the way to check her in. Why is somebody going to check her in? Because they did use a friends and family discount. Why did they use a friends and family discount? So, Jesse Wu apparently changed the flight about four times, over and over and over. She comes in on Friday to Monday. Then she says she can't do Friday to Monday. Then she says she can't do Friday to Monday. Then she says she has to return on Sunday. So back and forth with the flights, back and forth, they kept rebooking flights for her. And then, obviously, they have to change the hotel at the same time. So it went from $300 to $400. And as you can see the receipt, it went up to $600 per night. And she was in Manhattan. At this point, somebody tapped in and said, yo, let me use my friends and family discount. I think that's why they even got it down to that rate. And why was she in Manhattan? Remember, she complained about being in Manhattan. They said, well, they wanted to do it big for her since, you know, they know she's a little hostility, a little bougie. So they tried to accommodate her, put her in some, a high-end hotel. I respect that. But she obviously didn't appreciate it. She thought <laughs> she thought that was some Google got shit to put her in Manhattan. Hey, she can have her feelings. She can feel the way she was. Uh, for the way she does. So she felt like it was Coco operation. So let's rewind now. So the reason that they, you know, the, friend, the name wasn't under, under Jesse Wu's name is because somebody used a friends and family discount due to all the changes that she made. So boom. Now she was notified that her um, transportation, I'm sorry, the person that's checking her in is on the in route. They should be there shortly. Jesse Wu was to get checked in, but that hotel, you can only check in after 4 p.m. So they're ahead of schedule. The thing is, she should have been with the driver. The driver would have been accommodating her. I don't know what the accommodations were, but they were willing to do, basically, they, was, they were willing to move heaven and earth to accommodate Jesse Wu. Boom. Now, the young lady gets there to check in Jesse Wu which is kind of messed up. Jesse Wu didn't say during her, 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 her live that somebody was with her throughout the, somebody did arrive to check her in. Like she didn't really say that, it's kind of messed up. She left that point out. So somebody got there to check her in and upon time to check her in, basically Jesse Wu lost it. <laughs> she, Jesse Wu lost her mind and said, hell no, I'm not doing this. Nope, I'm not doing this. And within, the person arrived around 3.06. I think by 3.36 or something like that, one of the sixes, 
She had already called Delta, booked her flight. She was on her way out. She hopped in the Uber, headed to the airport. The promoters reached out to her, tried to speak to her, tried to make things right. She was not trying to hear it. Next thing you know, Jesse Wu gets on live and gives her version of the truth. Did she lie? She didn't lie. What she did do, though, is give her version of the truth, which I said, Jesse Wu will give her version of the truth. So all of that transpired with, within a three, three hour gap. Yeah, around three, three and a half hours. Like, that is true. It happened. But as far as having her wait that long, in all fairness, she waited two hours. That's what I can give her. She waited two hours. Is that a lot? It, it is. Is it excessive? I wouldn't say it's excessive. But the promoters tried to make things right. Mars, DJ Mars team tried to make things right. But Jesse Wu was not having that. Okay. Now, my thoughts on the situation. First of all, I don't even think the girl wanted to do the performance. Because that was just too rapid response. I don't think she wanted the performance, period. And it also shows within... Um, this video that she posted on YouTube, take a listen. Mm -mm -mm. A week from hell, like, it just was insane. Like things that, that kept happening to me. And then like, it, it, it finished off with me getting this weird ass booking that honestly, I, w I really wasn't even paying attention to, to be honest, because it was a friend of mine in, in Canada who's supposed to be a family friend who reached out to me a couple months ago and asked me to do this booking. and. You know, um, I didn't do like the manager route or the, the my partner that usually handles everything for me. I didn't do that route because it was a family friend. But boy, did I learn my lesson. Flew all the way out to New York just to get to the hotel. And there was no hotel room in my name. It, it was a family and friends discount on the room. The name actually, the name on the hotel was somebody else's name. Mind you, like this puts you in danger. Like... Somebody else having access, uh, their name on your room and having access to your room, like that could lead me to being like, you know, attacked in my room. That That's a safety issue. Um, and I wait around three, like for literally three hours. You can see the timestamps here, the timestamps here. Like notice one o'clock, like I'm already, I'm already almost at the hotel. After three, almost four o'clock, like I'm still waiting for things to be fixed. Like, I really was nice about the situation because, again, like I thought that this was somebody that was cool. I thought, you know, he was a, like a family friend on my father's side. Come to find out, this wasn't even a performance, it was somebody's janky ass birthday party. And it just is insane. And what makes this more insane is like there's literally a group of certain people that keep coming online, like since 2018, coming online and t saying how the culture doesn't fuck with me, how the Haitian culture doesn't fuck with me. You're a diva, you think you're this, you think you're that, you need to humble yourself. They always say this whenever they do janky shit like this. But it's like, so why do y'all keep finding ways to, to, to find me? It's like, you know when like, roaches always appear when there's something sweet around? It's like, how do y'all keep finding me? <laughs> what the fuck? The culture don't fuck with me, but why the culture keep trying to book me? Like, why? <laughs> it's really like mental illness. It's really like mental illness at this point. Like, leave me alone, please. Please, 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 please. Y'all can't afford hotel rooms. Please. Please. Leave me alone. Please. So, try to make it work. Didn't work out. Called Delta. Thank God I'm a Diamond member. I have close to 500,000 miles with Delta. So, child, they put me on the first thing smoking. Shout out to them. They also helped me get out of Barcelona's. Long story, remind me to make y'all to make y'all my birthday, you know, vlog recap and everything. But yeah, y'all, so that whole thing just reminded me, you know what? First of all, that person is not my friend. <laughs> that person is not my friend, obviously. This seems like they were trying to set me up on some on some weird shit. Um, and then like it turned out that it wasn't even like a performance. It was somebody's basement party. Like, I'm sorry. Like what? Um, no, like <sighs> The disrespect from Jesse Wu is ridiculous. How you gonna call the, the <laughs> how you gonna call Mars birthday party a basement party? 
Like, why does it have to go to that extreme? And now, so the, the situation was just so messy. It was kind of hard to pick up who's right, who's wrong. So many screenshots. This person sort of screenshot that, re screenshot voice notes. It was just a mess. So it's kind of hard to, to pick who's right, who's wrong. So at this point, it's like, tech my shoe. Like, who, whose side do I lean on? I try, to, I try to be transparent. I try to be in the middle. I don't want to lean on nobody's side. I just want to give you guys the truth. And the truth apparently is Jesse Wu has zero patience for the group of people. Zero. Could it have been handled differently? Absolutely. Mars with the screenshots that started putting up online, you didn't even have to go back and forth with her. Like, she said what she said. Let it go. You know your truth. I actually reached out to Mars and said, yo, you know what? Before I go and do the video that I did yesterday, let's just do a live. But Mars is too busy. He couldn't do the live, so I just, with the information I was given, I did the necessary thing, and I gave you guys the report. I gave y'all an update. I gave y'all exactly spot on what it was. So, at this point, if I don't buy you, I got, I got people <laughs> DMing me all this kind of crazy stuff, mad at me. Why y'all mad at me for? Why y'all mad at the free news guy? I didn't get on the internet to talk about the event. I didn't do none of the above. So if y'all gonna be mad at somebody, be mad at Mars and Jesse Wu. They took it to social media, and guess what? I'm just elaborating on what they're trying to say, and that's what I'm gonna continuously do. Don't get mad at me. The hell. But anyhow, how was the party? Uh, so it was a challenging night. That's what I can say. It was a low turnout. It wasn't what I expected to do. Mars kind of shot himself in the foot with this party, t t um, from my my point of view. Uh, Jesse Wu already was a big one. Um, people actually wanted to see a perform, including myself. And then Mars said everybody had to come and respect the dress code. They got to come in silk shirts. That bio concert was happening. People won't know. It was too much. It was too much going on to fight against like. You, you was going against the grain on that one. But what I did like about the party, I liked the presentation. I loved the, the lineup. The lineup was nice. Uh, um, Melly Sings did her thing. Uh, Alan Cave did his thing. Shaolin Bato didn't even complain about the sound issues this time. He just plowed through it. Shaolin Bato actually, y'all guys, Shaolin Bato actually put on a show that night. He he got off the stage. He got down into the crowd. La Yad, like he sang through the feedback. It's like finally, it was a good night. It was a great party, man. If the if the turnout was a lot better, it would have been just an immaculate party. But it was a low turnout. It's not. The HMI is just going through something right now. Long story short, but um, yeah. Let's matter of fact, let's check out some clips from Melly. Y'all didn't hear it right. First of all, before I continue, this is my city. I'm from New York City. Melly Sings is from New York City. Where y'all at? <laughs> Come on, see Brooklyn, baby. Hold on, you are back. I'll be around, but I'm from New York. I always represent New York.
and Mr. 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 Shaolin Batu. Let's take a look at his performance. <laughs> was also terrible too because it was the communication and the, the, the patience. It, this could have been something that could have been resolved like that. Jesse, you he had to wait two hours. We apologize. Here's your room. And they even offered to compensate her. Like, what? basically, how can, what, what do you want from us to make this show happen? She was not having it. Like I said, the communication was terrible and her patience was just thin. Um, Marzin, you guys could have did a better job. Like, it, I think it would have been better if I had a direct connect, like a direct contact for the driver, um, instead of she having to reach out to that person, that person reach out to that person, that person calls her back, and that person like it, it, was, it was just too much, too much, too much, too much. I think we could have, we could have did a better job with the communication on that part. And Jesse Wu, like, why did you even have to go on social media with that? Like, Jesus. Like, that's something happening with you and a promoter. Handle that with you and a promoter, because I'm pretty sure if it was a bigger promoter or somebody, like, you really, really felt like you needed, you wouldn't be on no social media talking that nonsense, man. So I feel like she she kind of bullied um, the, the, the group of people that was doing that party. Anyway, guys, uh, Monday through Friday, after 4 p.m., I'm here, man. You want to know why? Because my news is free. Peace.